So um, a bit of background for the Data Standards Authority. Um, we were set up, like I say, uh, in uh, I think funded in the April budget last year um, and set up over the summer last year um, with a remit to how to improve how the public sector manages data, uh, specifically by making use of standards to make it easier to share and use data across government. Um, we've got a variety of um, work streams, including data standards themselves, including uh, data sharing governance and um, uh, data assurance. Um, but uh, I specifically work on our API offering, which is uh, the part of our work which, is, which aims to improve the take up and usage of APIs across government through a variety of methods, which I'll come back to. Um, we have uh, our API football, which is how we uh, talk about the things that we do, because uh, API is obviously on a data standard, or data standard. So why is this part of the DSA's mission? Basically, because we think that APIs are the sharp end of data sharing. If you're doing data exchange, you should be using an API, absent a good reason. Um, so this football goes through all of the, the things that we like from APIs that I probably don't need to tell anyone on this call about. Um, the canonical data, or rather the ability to have someone else manage the data that you need in a way that you can rely on. Um, the ability to automate repeated tasks. Um, the 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 introduction of standardization and consistency, uh, which lead to ease of integration, which leads to improved time to value. And um, all of this, we think, leads to innovation, uh, often mentioned uh, in a very vague way, but we'll come back to this. So an API first approach, um, which is in the title of the talk and is uh, in, the in the center of that football, so I should probably define my terms. Um, it gets kicked around a lot, the term API first. Lots of people mean slightly different things by it. But um, we believe, correctly, I think, that uh, it means that an API should be the first interface to your data, i.e. when you're setting up a data source, the first way of accessing it is through an API. And all your internal and connected applications consume that data through the, I, through the API. This has many benefits, but the two I'm going to mention specifically, first, it makes the API a first-class citizen rather than something that's developed in parallel with another product. So that means that your own teams are helping to perfect the API because they have to consume it and work with it. But more importantly, from my perspective, and bear in mind, I do work for an organization called the Data Standards Authority. It means you have to think about the data from the beginning. You have to get the data structures right and think about how they'll be consumed and how they'll be updated if necessary going forward. Starting with the data, we believe, leads to more robust services being built on top of it. Now, this is all great, and we can say inspiring things like that all day, but it is, at the end of the day, just talk. Um, it's a lot easier to become API first as a startup you know, or anywhere that doesn't have a load of legacy or technical debt. Um, and these are all questions that we're, that we're, or issues that we're trying to address. So to do this, we're focusing on two core areas, how to build better APIs and how to better find APIs. So we're looking to to give departments the tools they need to produce better APIs. Um, that's primarily standards, assessment, and assurance, and guidance in technology and best practice. And we're helping to drive reuse of these APIs as common components across government by improving the discoverability of APIs, um, primarily by producing a metadata model that we hope will provide the basis of a standard for discovering APIs. So that our central API catalog, of which more later, uh, will eventually sit in the middle of a network of interconnected catalogs. So in terms of building better APIs, we're building a library of guide guidance uh, to help departments build in a consistent way. So the, here are some recent bits of guidance we've published or, or drafting at the moment. Um, we are uh, in charge of the API standards. We're in charge of um, the API catalog. And we're looking to build a consistent uh, offering, if you like, um, which will help departments take advantage of best practice, as well as to create a more standardized interface for developers. We believe that if you can integrate with a DFE API, a Department for Education API, for instance, you should be able to use the same patterns and tools to integrate with one from the National Health Service, Department for Working Pensions, or the Ordnance Survey. Now, I mentioned the, API, the, the Ordnance Survey specifically. Um, they've been pioneers in the production of APIs for a while now. And their uh, OS Paces API is, for instance, a fantastic address lookup and geo-matching resource. And it's free to use in the public sector. 
But across the government, people are building and rebuilding address lookup APIs internally. Um, we're really keen to stop this to get to a stage where products are built and problems are solved just once across government. There are, you know, it feels like um, if you own a mapping agency, as the government does, uh, using that as your source for address, address information is, you know, logical. So how can we make that easier? But not every service is as obvious as an address lookup. Um, but even for that one example, we discovered that one department had built 14 separate, in, separate internal APIs for address lookup. So clearly being obvious is no help. So what chances does a more obscure service have? Uh, every time a service is rebuilt instead of reused, there's both a cost of doing that and an opportunity cost. Time spent in reinvention when we could be in innovating. So we're duplicating a lot of effort and more than that, we're leaving opportunity on the table. So the question is why? What are the blockers here? So what do we think is blocking widespread adoption? I, I talked about, um, I talked about building better, you know, APIs as a, as a technology family are more, are more talked about than done properly, if you like. Um, we need standards, which, enable us to, which will enable us to publish and ver verify patterns for use. And we need to build expertise, both in producing and consuming them. So that's the guidance, standards and assurance I talked about before. But even if we do build a huge amount of technical expertise in these areas, we still have a, a real problem. Um, and that problem, with a shout, apologies for the shouty nature of this slide, is discoverability. Discoverability, we believe, is key. If you can't find the APIs that you want or people can't find your APIs, there's a problem. You know, they can't use them. You can't, you, and there's a problem here, both from the perspective of building services, um, which we'll come back to, but if, you're, if you've built an API um, that is designed to be used externally to your organization, you want that to be used, you know, not just because None of us like to work on things that uh, that don't get used, but also because, especially with whether it's a public, a public or a private organisation, um, it is that um, it's that usage and uptake that justifies its continual continual existence. So you know, it's 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 in both it's in the interest of both sides for these things to be findable and usable, and. What we discovered when we started to look into how APIs were used across the government was that there's a there's there are lots of APIs in use across departments, but generally speaking, they're they're found by word of mouth. You know, you you you, you get to use things because you previously worked in the department. You know, there's an API, and you can phone up the person who who works there and get access to it. Um, and that's not an approach that scales. You know, you can't have a situation where word of mouth is your main method for um, for for finding these things. And whether or not we're talking about components or, or microservices, if you're not aware of, of, of the existence of it, you know, it's not just that you can't use it, you can't, you can't spark ideas. And that's the, the innovation I mentioned earlier. Some of this is about, uh, is about the ability to inspire people to, to build things. So our API catalog, which is uh, it's pretty um, utilitarian, if you like, at the moment, um, it's designed to be or to become a discovery layer for government. Um, it's primarily uh, at the moment. It's a you know it's a searchable catalog of catal of um, of uh, APIs. That's a pretty old screenshot. It says about it says about two hundred in there at the moment. It's now about two hundred and fifty. It's but at the moment it's it's quite a kind of um, a basic and manually updated catalog. What we're looking to do is. And I mentioned before the metadata model, build a way for this to be programmatically updated from uh, other departments across government so that we, we are connected up to, uh, to internal API catalogs within other departments. For instance, uh, we work with the Department of Working Pensions, we work with the NHS Digital um, to allow them to populate their this catalog directly. But more than that, we're looking to develop this metadata model in such a way that it defines what you can share about an API safely and securely in the open. So and we believe that if you have a, uh, an API that is secret, which we do have in government, um, that obviously isn't something for public consumption, but, but if it's sensitive, you know, if it's, if it's uh, an access, if it's access to sensitive data, um, there is still a set of 
data about that data source or about that API that you can share. Um, and we're working with colleagues at uh, the National Cybersecurity Center at the Home Office to define what a metadata model that safely uh, exposes that would look like. Um, having built that or having got that uh, model through, will then change the way the catalog consumes and produces APIs so that it can uh, accept those that model and, and build a catalog upon it and on top of it, which will ena ena enable us to build a central catalog or a, a much more uh, thorough central catalog. But it will also enable other catalogs to be built you know, using these, these sources. You could have a situation where, where catalogs were built by subject or by or by, um, or by interest area, if you like, um, just in terms of um, uh, just based on this, this metadata model. So this is how we, we plan to use um, a kind of technical standard, if you like, to drive interoperability and to drive um, reuse of APIs. Now, there's a, there's a, there's a separate issue to this, which is... Um, which we're working on as well, which is um, business discovery, if you like. So this isn't just a, a signpost to a bunch of dev portals. This is also a way to spark that innovation I mentioned earlier by getting uh, the descriptions of the API and, by, and the capacities of the API and the license requirements of the API into a human readable format that can be shared among the dis uh, with the business. So with this, as in all things, because we're quite a small team, we're driven by the... Um, by best practices from across government. So this is the NHS Digital Cap API catalog, and our API catalog is, you know, borrows heavily from the concepts here, not least in this notion of a of a separate issue, of a separate way of describing um, APIs for business consumption as well as developer consumption. Um, we believe this is an exemplar service, service uh, and we're looking to we're looking to emulate it and take and take best practice from it and, and use it across government. Um, you know, this, what's great about the, the NHS API catalog is that it both presents a view of, of what APIs are available, but it also, it tells you what you can't use as well as what you can, which is as useful from an onboarding perspective as, as you know, as anything else. It, it is useful to a developer to know, well, to be honest, I'm not going to be able to use this API. I need to look for something else. And this is the kind of thing we, we're looking to, to, to um, make sure that people have access to. Uh, so yeah, it's got that licensing thing, and as well as things like much more traditional things like sandboxes and API specs to allow developers to get started. Um, so the rest of the API offering from the, to the data standards is designed to support different parts of the API ecosystem. Um, let me just bring out a couple today. We run uh, the API and data exchange community across government. So that's a uh, a group of people who are involved with producing or consuming APIs. Uh, we run monthly workshops and um, help to enable kind of cross departmental connections um, to you know, help spread practice in a, in a less formal way. Um, so if you are working on APIs in the public sector and you weren't aware of it, get in touch, join up. Um, we've also, I mentioned that we, we developed the API standards for government. And on the back of that, we are developing a, a uh, process for assessing APIs uh, for, for, um, so that there is a, a badge of quality and consistency that a, a, a government produced API can aspire to. Um, and then we've got various bits of guidance. Um, so for instance, on benefits of APIs for stakeholders, um, for, to explain what APIs are for you know, senior le leadership um, and uh, API management. So, um, how you should be managing your API ecosystem, and going forward, we're going to we're going to pad that out with lots of different uh, bits of guidance. So that it, I mentioned a library of guidance at the beginning. We're aiming to have a, a, a one-stop shop for the UK government in terms of where they find advice about producing APIs. So um, that pretty much brings me to the end. I'm going to just quickly sum up and talk about what what we've learned in this process and what are our recommendations. Um, I think that whatever size of organization you work at, um, if you're looking to improve uh, the use of APIs, there are two things, two principal things to concentrate on, building them better and finding them better. So helping people build better APIs by giving them support and guide rails to do so. Um, 
we think that design guidance for an organization should probably be set centrally. But, but as I mentioned about the NHS catalog, it should be all guidance and all processes should be informed and fed into by the best practice from across the organization rather than, rather than imposed centrally. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're a small team, so we have to make a virtue of necessity here. But we, we believe that we will we'll get a better result by including all the people who are doing this at the, you know, at the, at the coal face, as it were, rather than just imposing decisions on them. And then I can't, I can't stress the importance of discoverability here. Um, as I said before, if you can't find them, you can't use them. And not just you can't use them, but the team producing them can't justify their existence. You know, enabling that discovery process keeps APIs healthier, keeps them well used, but it, it saves time, stops reuse, um, and it spurs innovation. And that's me. Thanks all for listening.